Hi everybody. We're gonna do notes today with paper and pencil, just like you guys are. And just make sure that anything I write down, you guys write down, and then you'll have exactly what you need for the homework. All right, so start with today's date. I'm gonna let you fill it in. Hopefully it was already up for you to see. And the title for today's notes, uh, we have to cover three things, comparing, opposites, an absolute value. So that's your title there. We're gonna do things one at a time. So we're gonna start with comparing. Um, sometimes I do write fast, so hopefully if you need me to pause it, raise your hand if you're in class, or type in the chat and we can pause it. All right, so compare. Now what do I mean? So if a number is greater than another number, we need a symbol to show that. So I think you probably already know it. I'm gonna start with this one actually. This is the less than symbol. Now I want you to memorize that that symbol is less than. I know some people think, oh, the alligator, you know, eats the bigger number, that's fine if it works. But I want you to memorize this symbol. So read the symbol just like a word. So I read the word less from left to right. All right, same thing with the symbol. I start on the left-hand side, it's got the smaller part, so that is the less than symbol. If you flip it and you read the bigger part first, that is the greater than symbol. Okay, so that's how you're going to remember it, or maybe you have your own way, that's fine. Um, what else do we have? Well, we do have equal to. That is a way to compare. There is a symbol where you put a slash through the equal to part. That is called not equal to. And then there are some combo symbols. So if you combine the less than with the equal to, you get a symbol that looks like that. That's called exactly what I said, less than or equal to. Now, when would you ever use such a thing? You wouldn't say two is less than or equal to three. No, two is less than three. You would use it if you had a variable, like x. So if I said x is less than or equal to three, then x could be a bunch of different things. It could, well, let's see, could it be three? Yeah, it could equal three. It could equal two. It could equal 2.5, zero negative 10, a bunch of different things. So when you use, it's called an inequality, right? Your variable could be a bunch of different things. So that's the combo. And you can flip it. You could have a greater than or equal to. Again, we won't really use these much when we're comparing the two numbers, but you'll see them again in the future. So. What would your homework ask? Great question. Let's try an example here, example one. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna give you a number and then a blank and then another number. And all they want you to do is fill in if it's a greater than symbol, a less than, or an equal to. So three is blank than seven. Three is less than seven. And you're done, that's it. Um, let's try another one. How about negative four and four? Ooh, negatives. Let's just remind ourselves. Here's a number line. Ooh, that's four, three, two, one, hello. Negatives are to the left, that's why I'm drawing it. So negative four is less than positive four, right? If you're to the left, you're always less than. All right, could I trick you? Ooh, what if I gave you two negatives? Negative two and negative three. That's when you might need to look at the number line. Here's negative two, here's negative three. Because negative two is to the right, it's actually greater than negative three. Right, look at the positives. Four is greater than three and it's to the right. So that, you gotta think right or left. Or sometimes people think temperature, since we're all getting our temperatures taken. Right, it would be negative one, negative two, negative three, you get colder. So negative two 
is actually warmer than negative 3. It's greater than negative 3. So that could be a way to think about it. All right? So that's the comparing. I think you guys get the idea. The next thing we had to learn was opposites. All right, so how do you explain the word opposite without using the word opposite? Hmm. Let's pause and discuss. All right, there were some good answers, but my favorite is exactly different. And mathematically, what they say is exactly same distance from zero, same distance from zero, but on the other side of the number line. That's number line, not hashtag line. Okay. So go back to your number line here. So if I said three, what's the opposite of three? Well, three is one, two, three away from zero, right? What's exactly on the other side? Negative three. So three and negative three are opposites. Two and negative two are opposites. Pretty easy. I don't think I can trick you. Let's write those down. Three is the opposite of negative three. Um, what if I said negative 17? What's the opposite of negative 17? Uh, 17. What's the opposite of negative 100? 100. Okay, so pretty easy stuff. Comparing and opposites, pretty good stuff. Now for my favorite part, the last thing we have to learn, absolute value. Okay, now let me write the definition and then we'll talk about how to figure it out. So the definition says it's the distance, and that word's important, the distance a number is from zero. All right, so we're gonna pause again and talk about that word distance. Okay, so hopefully now we understand, since it's a distance, the answer is always going to be positive. So how on earth could I trick you? I don't think I can. I'll try, but I don't think I can. So, all right, so what does this look like? Example one. So what they do is they put the number in what they call absolute value bars. So they'll say the absolute value of negative four is, and you have to figure it out. So you ask yourself, how far away from zero is negative four? Well, it's four away. So that's your answer. The absolute value of negative four is four. Now, if I gave you positive four inside the bars, same question. How far away from zero is positive four? Well, it's four away. So two different problems, same answer, because they're the same distance, just on opposite sides. All right, let's try another one here. What about the absolute value of negative two? Yep, you guessed it. Um, what if I gave you a couple together? Like if I said the absolute value of negative two plus the absolute value of five. Now some of you can do this in your head, that's fine. I like to kind of see your process. So I would underneath figure each one of these out. What is the absolute value of negative two? It's two. What is the absolute value of five? It's five. Two plus five, and there you go. Sometimes they put a couple things in there. Like if I said, what's the absolute value of eight minus two? Those bars actually act a little bit like parentheses. So you have to solve the inside first. So what is eight minus two? Six, and we haven't used the bars yet. So they're still there. And now what's the absolute value of six? Still six. 
All right, so be careful with that. Kind of solve the inside first and then use the bars. Some kids, they see the bars, they just start making things positive. No. Then we would get a 10, right? Eight plus two or something, don't do that. Solve what's in here first, then take the absolute value. All right? Okay, now what is your homework gonna look like? Your homework is going to kind of combine some of what we did here. So here's what your homework will look like. All right, they're gonna give you absolute value of 13. They're gonna put a space and then give you absolute value of, let's say, negative 12. Now in the space, they're gonna want you to write either a less than, greater than, or equal to sign. So again, I suggest figure these out and then put in the symbol. So what is the absolute value of 13? 13. What is the absolute value of negative 12? 12. All right, so now we've got 13 and 12. A greater than symbol goes there. All right, so again, I suggest solve these first. Because if you do it quick, if I do this one quick, I might put a less than. I see an eight, a nine, or a greater than, I don't know. If you solve it, absolute value, absolute value, okay, eight is less than nine. Okay, so just make sure you're solving them in your homeworks. So you might need scrap paper um, to kind of figure things out, that's fine. And then go through and, and we can talk about, you know, exactly how to complete that next. All right, good job guys.